Hi, I'm Sharik Richardson. Hi, I'm Ryan Burke. And I'm Stephanie Burke. I'm Malazzo, co-owner of Packertown Coffee Park. John Williamson, owner of Level Water. New Orleans Black Chamber and New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition. Thank you both so much for inviting me to welcome you to the Health and Wealth Webinar. Born and raised here. Step up and get involved. We believe in what's called harmonic prosperity, which means we want you to be prosperous in every area of your life. We believe that your health, it's a personal, it is a professional, and it is a business matter. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Shonda Macias. I'm David Ellis, President and CEO of Energy New Orleans. My name is Ernest Leger, I'm the Acting Commissioner for the Louisiana Alcohol and Tobacco Control. Really happy here today to, to share with you guys concerning the Main Street Recovery Grant Program. Well, good evening, and I'm Laverne Timms, the Executive Director of the New Orleans Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us this evening as we present to you one of our Straight Talk series, your Business Improved Mobility webinar, which is one of our chamber partners, Big Easy and the New Orleans Complete Street Coalition. Let me give you a brief history of the New Orleans Black Chamber. We were established in 2006, and we are 15 years strong. The NRBCC, has a very diverse membership base of 300 plus members, and we are steadily increasing in our membership and presence in the 10 parish region that we, are, that we serve, which is Jefferson Parish, Orleans, Plaquemines, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. James, St. John, the Baptist Parish, St. Tammany, Tangipahoe, and Washington Parish. Our mission is continue to support and to promote and educate our members for sustainable growth and expansion. And we're so proud to bring these type of webinars to you. So what we have in store for you tonight, I would like to introduce to you, Mr. Robert Bell, the campaign manager of the New Orleans Complete Street Coalition, 
who will discuss their programs and initiatives. Robert. Thank you, Laverne um, and Perry and everyone at uh, the, the New Orleans Regional Black Chamber. Um, it's exciting to be working with you all, um, you know, in the great initiatives that you're doing to try to promote economic empowerment, but particularly for our uh, local entrepreneurs and our, our local black business leaders and folks just trying to grow and sustain themselves and their communities. Uh, it's a it's a great effort and something that we're proud of to be a, a, in partnership with. Um, you know, at my um, job at Bike Easy, uh, we focus a lot on how people get around. Um, but this effort that we're doing with the New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition is meant to be broader and for all sorts of people coming from different backgrounds and different efforts and initiatives to um, work hand in hand to improve the streets and mobility of people in New Orleans. So I'm gonna share my screen with everyone um, because I have a presentation uh, that will kind of go over the campaign and why it matters to local business people. So I hope everyone can see uh, what I'm sharing here. So as I said, um, my organization Bike Easy is just one member in the New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition. And we're all working on a campaign focused on bringing more safety and less stress to how people move around New Orleans, whether that's biking, walking, transit, or driving. Um, it's all about how we're reimagining our roadways so that everyone can get around more easily. So I'm gonna, excuse me advance the slides here. And these are the sort of organizations that are a part of the New Orleans Complete Streets Coalition. So we have a lot of advocacy groups, but then we also have, you know, artists and culture bearers, neighborhood groups and associations, and then business, individual businesses and business associations such as the Regional Black Chamber, as well as um, schools and churches and other uh, local groups. And these are just some of the groups that you might recognize all locally run and operated, including such national organizations as their local chapters of AARP and American Heart Association. Uh, and then a lot of other great organizations doing a lot of great work. And we're all working very closely on this campaign week in and week out. And these are our main objectives, why we're working on this campaign together, focus on the streets um, to improve the community's safety and health I think we all know that um, you know we have a long way to go to make our uh, individuals, families, and communities healthier with longer lives, with less long-term chronic health issues that we know are preventable, um, partly through being active and outdoors and in um, in our communities. And then economic empowerment and how how streets, mobility, transportation systems directly affect the local economy and local businesses. And then of course, you know, our public lands, our streets are a big part of making sure that we're sustainable going into the future. Um, and I have this slide in here just as a reminder of some of our ongoing challenges and highlighting, especially the one in right in the middle there that we are year in year out consistently way too high on the list of American cities where people simply walking down the street or walking across the street are hit and killed due to no fault of their own. And that's for a wide variety of reasons, but the ways in which we build our streets and talk about these issues as a culture can play a, a gigantic role in bringing uh, a better situation when it comes to uh, that in particular. And this is not an equitably distributed problem as many issues are in our society. I think we know that. But we also, but th this map and this graphic right in front of you right now shows that, you know, uh, roughly one in three um, uh, census tracts in the area in our uh, community are designated as high poverty. But more than two thirds of deadly crashes for people biking and walking occur where um, people in poverty are living. And that is not just a coincidence, that's due to a lot of choices over a lot of years, a lot of policy and a lot of inequity built into our local community. So we're trying to go about this intentionally to reverse 
this exact trend. So this is an example, in case you're wondering what complete streets are all about, what this actually means. Uh, this is a graphic that uh, I use and other folks in the campaign use to talk about the change that we wanna see. This is a street before any treatments um, were installed. And it's actually, you'll notice a pretty <laughs> nicely paved street that's actually not that messed up. And we know there's a lot of other streets around town and in our various parishes that are, look a lot worse than this but this is still a street that needs some help. Um, it's unclear if you're trying to bike or walk or drive, if you're trying to take a turn, where are you gonna be on this street? You know, you might, if you're walking, you're probably on the sidewalk, but other than that, it's kind of a free for all. And that's a big issue when people are trying to navigate uh, safely to and around one another. So a complete street, this is a renovation that occurred on Marconi Drive right next to City Park in Delgado Community College. This is an example of what that can look like where every sort of person, every sort of traveler, every sort of resident, wherever, when they're using the street, they know how to clearly go about what they need to do. If they're getting off a bus, there's a clear place for them to be, a clear place for them to wait safely from uh, the weather, whatever it might be that day. If you're biking, you also know where to be. And if you're driving, you know where the bikers and the walkers and the people getting off the bus are supposed to be as well. So this is a much safer environment and um, it helps to save lives. It also helps to promote activity and makes it easier for students going to Delgado or folks trying to get to the park. It, it just makes it easier and safer for everyone involved. Uh, just some information, just some images of our campaign. You've probably have seen some of our billboards around town uh, talking about more safety and less stress, either on a bus, or billboard, digital ads. And uh, before COVID struck, we were going doing a lot of door-to-door -door outreach. Uh, that has slowed down, of course, because we can't do that as safely, but uh, still making a lot of calls, trying to make sure people understand the benefits of um, better transportation in New Orleans. And I just got a couple slides here about just the overall sentiment um, around these issues and how it's changed over the years. And just to say that people understand the need for better transportation um, for themselves and for the community. And this is a, a pretty good one to show that nearly nine in 10 uh, New Orleans residents say the city should provide safe alternatives to driving for people to get to work. Meaning that I think it's grown apparent for people over the years that building more lanes to the highways or widening the major streets doesn't get the job done. And actually the more you build in that way, traffic just follows it, it, you know, it grows with it. You need different ways for people to get around. If you think about folks who rely on uh, bus service, those are people largely without cars. We need better bus service. We know people want a bike and to make it so it's not a dangerous situation. And the more you have safe alternatives, the easier each one of those methods of travel becomes. Less cars on the road means it's a quicker drive for you, um, et cetera, et cetera. And here's some information about, um, in a big part of the campaign that we're running is in support of the city of New Orleans um, and Mayor Cantrell and her team. and them building out this moving New Orleans low stress bikeway network, which is centered around protected bike lanes. And so these uh, graphics, uh, excuse me, uh, numbers, poll results. This is of a scientifically conducted poll um, towards the latter half of last year, showing that 80% of New Orleans voters support the mayor's plan um, and wanna see the, these connected uh, bikeway networks. They see it as an improvement in their own quality of life and for themselves and for their families. So that's a really great number that shows a rock solid majority of folks see these things as benefits to themselves. Um, uh, and then these other two uh, poll results here also show really strong support. This one, this uh, slide shows you a few different poll results from that same poll. Um, just generally about transportation on a more broader level, not simply focus on biking or uh, protected bike lanes. Um, I like to highlight this one at the top, this 58% number saying that residents want to see the city do everything it can 
to get people out of their cars and provide transportation alternatives. And what that shows you is that, again, a clear majority of residents want to be able to enjoy their city however they choose to do so. They want more walking paths. They want fixed sidewalks. They want to be able to bike to the store to go see their friends. And they want buses that come on time and get them to the places they want to go. Um, yeah, so those are just great numbers all around. Um, and that last number is nearly unanimous, 93%. Uh, say that people deserve as many op transportation options as possible to get to work on time, understanding the connection between the uh, local economy and it maybe not working so well right now because as different events change in New Orleans, people get, you know, end up leaving or having to push out further and further from the center of the city where jobs are that we need transportation systems to meet them where they're living and make life easier um, for everyone. Um, so let me just take a couple minutes here to highlight the fact of this great partnership that I'm really, that I'm excited about, that the rest of our coalition is excited about, that we kicked off last year with um, our Health is Wealth webinar with uh, the Regional Black Chamber. We were fortunate to have uh, Mayor Cantrell join us um, as well as other city leaders and local um, business owners and um, my good friend Rika from the American Heart Association. And we're running this campaign, um, trying to reach out digitally um, and uh, in other ways uh, to local black business owners to emphasize and highlight the benefits of a healthy, more mobile New Orleans and how that can directly benefit uh, their business and local economy at large. Um, and it's true that um, better transportation does benefit business. Um, there are studies from around the nation, and I was trying to pull together uh, some different studies uh, going back several years, but there's, um, there's been a good amount of documentation showing that when streets are safe and accessible for all people and all types of ways of getting around, more people end up really feeling using them and using them locally and keep and then keeping their dollars closer to home as they're walking, as they're biking, they stop at local stores more, more often. And some studies even show that they tend to spend more um, on these trips because you know if you're out walking and biking, you might end up in the well, I can't carry you know, all these things, let me just get it at this one place right near the house or whatever the reason is, but there's studies to show that. But certainly it makes sense that if you're not driving all over the place, if you're walking or biking, those dollars are gonna stay within that area. And that can really be a big boost uh, to local business. And we're hoping uh, to local black owned businesses here in uh, the region. Um, this one study that I wanted to highlight um, from a a major group called Smart Growth America did a study of over 37 different cities that had installed complete streets projects, which means um, streets that are made safe for biking, walking, and all, all sorts of transportation. And they consistently show safer um, streets with fewer crashes occurring on them, that those streets and the streets directly off, off and adjacent to them have increased employment um, <clears throat> net new, you know, new businesses come there, there's more local activity. So it just in, you know, increases employment, increased business um, activity, and higher property values, um, which hopefully can benefit uh, your business. And just a couple more here that um, in New York, um, on bike paths, uh, business retail sales went up as much as 49%. Uh, this is from a study from 2018, I believe, and um, similar sort of uh, numbers for expanded walking facilities that they ended up uh, reducing blighted commercial um, empty spaces. So the more people are walking and biking and spending their dollars around there, the more it becomes attractive and you can increase and hopefully have a virtuous cycle of uh, business investment and activity. And then New Orleans was actually a part of uh, that study. Um, and from going back from when Esplanade Avenue um, reduced one lane of vehicular traffic, um, you know, people were very concerned about what that would mean. One thing that it meant was that 
um, the amount of walking increased to up to 60%. And, you know, you just think about what that could mean if a business, a restaurant um, is situated in such an environment, what that could mean for their sales. One other thing I wanted to mention before I stop, because I need to hand it off uh, to our next guest, is that we are currently um, open and available um, for our second round. Uh, we did a, one round of this last year, but a new round of what we're calling activation mini grants. And what that is, is up to $2,000 for a grant. Um, I think the, the awards range from between $500 to $2,000. Um, for any local organization or leader or business who wants to make a, do a project or an informational campaign or just any sort of, not very large, just, you know, some sort of initiative, some sort of project to educate or to draw attention to making the streets safer and more accessible, either right around where they're located or just in the community or with a certain group of folks that they may um, work with, kids, seniors or or whomever and so you can go to nolacompletestreets.org that's um, our website and those applications are going to be open um, I think through February February 12th um, which is right up around Mardi Gras there's a chance that deadline could be extended a little bit but February 12th is uh, the official deadline there um, and I encourage anyone uh, interested to apply um, again that's nolacompletestreets.org and um, these are examples of some of uh, last year's uh, mini grant award winners. Girl Trek um, did a walking tour in Algiers and highlighted uh, some of the new improvements coming to that area. Uh, the great criminal justice educational organization, NOLA to Angola, did a series of bike rides that we sponsored. And then a neighborhood association in Algiers, uh, Aurora West, did a great day of community bike rides and educational, um, you know, just uh, information that they were sharing. And it was just a nice fun event. So we were happy to, really thrilled to sponsor that as well. So I'll wrap it up there, but please check us out. And um, I think it is now my job to hand it off to Dan Jatris uh, uh, with the city, the mayor's office of transportation. All right, thank you, Rob. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Jotris. I'm the policy and program manager with the Mayor's Office of Transportation. Um, give me one second here while I hold my presentation up onto the screen. Get it shared with you. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, tonight talk a little bit more about the uh, how the city is implementing the Moving New Orleans uh, Bikes Plan that Rob was just mentioning in his presentation. Uh, so uh, covering tonight, uh, introducing the Mayor's Office of Transportation. I'm sure not everyone is familiar with it. Uh, it's a new, newer office that Mayor Cantrell created. Uh, talking about our overall Moving New Orleans Transportation Action Plan. And then the Moving New Orleans Bikes Project, which is uh, part of that plan. Uh, and then wrap up my presentation tonight with some discussion about uh, the recently held Industry Day uh, and ways that local businesses, uh, including those of you uh, on this webinar tonight, um, can learn more and get engaged with business opportunities um, available through the, the um, multitude of projects that the city is engaging in. So the, uh, the Mayor's Office of Transportation, as I mentioned, was created by Mayor Cantrell when she took office uh, in 2018. And it's really intended to promote transportation priorities across uh, different departments within the city, as well as our external uh, transportation partners, entities like the airport or the RTA. And we're really working to encourage safety, equity, uh, regional connectivity and multimodal accommodations uh, in our transportation systems and within the projects that we are implementing and the policies that we're pursuing and work to coordinate a, a, a just global vision around projects and strategic initiatives um, that hasn't always existed uh, at the city level across all the different entities that have some role in transportation. 
Um, the mission is really creating a people-centered approach to our to our streets with an emphasis on livability. And um, <clears throat> that connects to, to equity issues, particularly around transit, um, making sure that people are connected uh, to different to our transportation network and have options within that transportation network. Um, we need to be connected regionally uh, to our surrounding parishes, um, our, our friends and neighbors. Uh, Laverne mentioned that, that your organization covers the 10 parish area of, of Southeast Louisiana. Uh, and that's exactly the kind of um, focus that we wanna have. How can we connect our transportation systems and networks to our neighboring parishes around the region uh, in order to allow our, our residents and our businesses to be connected uh, and, and succeed. And then leveraging the assets and the investments that we're making in our streets uh, to ensure that they are meeting the needs and, and the goals of the city, uh, not just our transportation needs, but the other needs, um, some of which Rob mentioned earlier around economic development or public health. So the Moving New Orleans plan um, is Mayor Cantrell's transportation vision for the city. And it's built around four core themes, safety, efficiency, equity, and connectivity. Uh, and all of the initiatives and programs and policies that we undertake are connected back to at least one and usually multiple of, of those themes. Uh, so that's that's what we're trying to accomplish through the overall plan. The Moving New Orleans Bikes uh, project is one element coming out of that uh, broader transportation action plan. And it's a, a joint initiative between the Office of Transportation and the Department of Public Works to uh, both plan and then deliver uh, on an accelerated timeline the first 75 miles of a connected low stress bikeway network in the city. Um, and while uh, and this process has been going on uh, almost two years now when we first kicked it off with, with the planning associated with moving New Orleans bikes, that was in April of 2019. We held a, a series of public meetings uh, around the city, eight, eight different meetings, at least one in each council district where we ask people questions like, uh, where are they, what are they trying to access and where are they trying to access in, in the city? Where are the barriers and challenges that, that they encounter? Uh, what kinds of preferences do they have on the facility types that they feel would be safe and comfortable for them to use, for their family to use? Um, we took all that public input, combined it with uh, various data sets around uh, crash data and uh, roadway characteristics. And we developed a citywide uh, network plan, came back to the public later that summer uh, and held another series of meetings to present our findings and, and our summarized um, input that we, and summarize all the input we had received from the public in the spring and, and introduce this uh, network uh, blueprint plan. As then part of the, the rapid uh, accelerated uh, implementation of projects, we move right into uh, design and engagement around specific corridors, starting with a group of projects in Algiers that totaled up to 11 miles worth of um, roadways that create a, a bikeway ne network uh, that reaches all points in, in Algiers. Um, so we began that engagement and outreach in late 2019 and continued um, with the implementation of those projects uh, in the spring of 2020, uh, despite the, the setbacks uh, and, and added complications of the pandemic, uh, the city has remained committed uh, throughout the pandemic of keeping our projects uh, moving, both as a way to keep uh, residents employed, uh, but also to deliver these critical infrastructure projects that uh, our residents and our businesses are relying on, whether it's repairing streets and uh, improving drainage. Uh, we don't want to keep these projects moving and delivering for the, for the residents. Uh, while this is um, branded under the name Moving New Orleans Bikes, it's actually these projects are a prime opportunity for us to really be demonstrating our complete streets approach uh, to projects. The city of New Orleans uh, has an ordinance and a policy in place to set the structure for how we approach our road projects with that complete streets mindset. Uh, as Rob talked about, it, it's really coming at our projects of how can we plan, design, construct, and operate our road network 
to meet the needs uh, of all the, the roadway users, whether that's people walking, biking, driving, taking transit, et cetera. Uh, so when we're doing these Moving New Orleans Bikes projects, uh, we, we are, of course, implementing uh, bikeway designs such as bicycle boulevards on our lower volume, lower speed roadways, and then protected bike lanes uh, on our higher speed, higher volume roadways. But we're also taking opportunities to make improvements for people walking, uh, doing sidewalk repairs, putting in new crosswalks, uh, making improvements to transit stops. Um, a lot of these projects are just associated with general roadway repairs, either resurfacing roadways or pardon me, um, panel replacement on, on other roadways, uh, making lighting repairs. So we're trying to come in and holistically look at the road and try to you know, um, make a baseline improvements across the board for those roadways. So we're, we're doing these implementations in small mini networks um, so that we can get a greater impact. In the past, you know, often these road projects were taking advantage or these bike projects would take advantage of existing roadway construction. So we ended up with disconnected um, bike lanes uh, scattered throughout the city. And we know that it's gonna be much more useful if you have a network that connects so that people can complete a whole trip um, from, their, from wherever they're starting to, to get to their destination. So we're doing the implementation of these projects in, in these small mini networks uh, with the eye on that they then interconnect with each other. And by the end of this, we will have um, a larger network that cuts across multiple neighborhoods in the city. So, so far we've, um, we've moved into five different groups of these little mini networks. Um, starting, like I mentioned before, in Algiers with, with a 10 or 11 mile network of roadways, and then moving to the East Bank um, with, it, with a number of projects in the Marini, um, central uh, and central city and the lower garden district, the CBD, and then um, seventh ward, mid city, uh, St. Rock area. Uh, project construction has started um, and is, is near complete on most of the projects in Algiers and Marini. Uh, and construction will be beginning this spring in the other three um, mini networks that I've mentioned. And, and we will also begin rolling out uh, planning and engagement processes with the public uh, for additional uh, neighborhoods in the city. Uh, that, that community engagement is, is a really important part. Um, we're doing it in a way where we're bringing conceptual designs to neighbors and residents, uh, getting feedback and then incorporating that feedback into uh, a more refined design that we come and bring back uh, to a second round of public meetings around pre-construction. So we're, we're really trying to uh, engage with the public in a meaningful way where we're getting good input that we're then able to respond to and incorporate uh, and try to moving away from the perception that public meetings are telling people what's happening instead of asking people how we can make something happen. Uh, all the meeting information that we've done so far, the presentations, uh, the fact sheets that we've developed around uh, projects are all on our website and I'd encourage uh, those of you to go check that out uh, to get that deeper level of detail that we can't go into in tonight's um, format. Uh, and then transitioning to the, the last topic I wanted to talk about tonight uh, is opportunities for local businesses. Uh, the city hosts a quarterly industry day uh, to highlight projects uh, and provide updates and transparency around the projects and the, and the opportunities that they provide for local businesses. Uh, particularly, we're focused on uh, connecting with DBEs and small businesses uh, as prime contractors on, on these projects, on these initiatives. Uh, and that Industry Day reviews RFPs uh, and it, it discusses building projects and road projects and workforce, workforce development opportunities. Uh, and of course, around uh, general procurement and supplier diversity that, that the city strives to, to advance. Uh, we, we actually just hosted one of these Industry Days last week on um, last Tuesday night. And the information, and I, I can pass these uh, links on to Laverne to disseminate to those of you uh, on the webinar tonight and, and uh, the broader uh, mailing list of the, of the chamber. Um, these links can take you to the information from last week's Industry Day. Uh, general information uh, and then uh, copies of the slides that were part of that uh, virtual meeting as well as a, a recording of that meeting uh, and the conversations and questions that went along with it. 
Uh, so I would encourage all of you to, to check that out. And from that website, you can get information. Like I said, these meetings happen quarterly and you'll be able to, to sign up to participate in those future meetings if, if it's of interest to you. Uh, finally, if you have questions about any of these uh, projects, you can reach out to Roadwork NOLA uh, via phone, uh, email, the website for the Moving New Orleans Bikes project is nola.gov slash transportation slash moving New Orleans bikes uh, with a dash between each of those words uh, or follow us on social media for updates. Uh, so that's uh, all I've got to talk about tonight and I'm looking forward to any uh, questions that uh, you guys have for Rob and I. Okay, well, if there aren't any other, uh, any questions for Robert or Dan, thank you so much for that valuable information. Of course, you know, this would not happen without our funders. And so I want to thank all of us research program who has funded NRBCC to host a series of webinars uh, focused on health and businesses. Uh, all of us program research has an effort to bring together about 1 million or more volunteers that reflect a diversity of people living in the United States who will volunteer their health data for at least 10 years. All of Us Services is a national research resource to inform thousands of studies over a wide variety of health conditions. So I would like to share a short video that explains a little bit more about the program. You can play the video. Meet Ray. Ray lives on a farm. He loves playing kickball with his grandkids, but lately he's gotten a little slower and been visiting the doctor a lot more often. This is Kim. Kim lives in the city. She loves to exercise, cook healthy meals, and can't remember the last time she called in sick. They're both people, but not all people are the same. And yet, when we visit the doctor, our treatments don't look that different. Why is that? Because we just don't have enough information to do it better until now. Enter all of us. The research program based on precision medicine. Precision medicine is a revolutionary new approach to treating and preventing disease that's personalized instead of one size fits all. By gathering health data from one million people like Ray and Kim and Trevor and Samir, our country's best researchers will be able to develop treatments that are as unique and complex as we are. With this new information, doctors will have a better understanding of disease so they can innovate the next great breakthroughs in medicine. Once enough people join, suddenly everything changes. Information becomes clear, patterns emerge, and simple data transforms into into life-saving knowledge. This means that Ray and Kim's children and their children's children can live longer, healthier lives. By becoming one of the first one million people to volunteer, you can help reshape the entire future of healthcare for generations to come. If we can figure out how to fly, put a man on the moon, and connect the entire world, surely we should be able to improve the future of healthcare. Not just for Ray and Kim or even you, but for all of us. Sign up at joinallofus.org. The future of health begins with you. Meet so Ray. You, so if you're interested in learning more about all of us, you can visit, as stated in the video, joinallofus.org. Uh, the site outlines participant expectations, frequent asked questions, and step to uh, ensure participants' privacy and safety of the data use and much more. So again, thank you, All of Us Research Program, for funding tonight's webinar. Well, we're extremely excited about our partnership that we have with Bike Easy. We are currently working with them to identify Black Chamber members to install bike racks into targeted areas and heavy cycle traffic across the city. It includes a bike rack, an installation, and I might even think about taking it to the next step, including locks as well. Our goal is to increase more mobility and increase our business customer base and revenue in certain targeted corridors. So if you or if, if any of you are interested, please feel free to contact me via email and I will put my email address in the chat. I think this is gonna be an exciting initiative and we look forward to getting started very, very soon. In regards to our membership, 
Of course, we are a membership-based organization and NRBCC is a voice and a resource, a resource for our Black businesses. So if any of you that are on tonight want to become a member of the chamber, please visit our website at www.nrbchamber.org or call Keith Morgan at 504-948-0091 or email him. I would ask that you put your, uh, more, um, Kenneth, if you would put your email address in the chat, just in case there are those who may be interested in becoming a member of the New Orleans Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. And lastly, of course, with these webinars, we have a lot of exciting things going on in February. And so our first one is NRBCC Chamber Plus in debt. We're partnering with the Southern Region of Minority Supplier Development Council, Inc. It's a virtual event called Half Past Six Event on Thursday, February the 11th from 6.30 to 7.30. And there will be a 30 minute performance by local artists and a 30 minute workshop with the Southern Regional Minority Supplier as well as with NRBCC. NRBCC has partnered with the State Treasurer's Office to host a series of financial readiness and the State Treasurer Don Schroeder will be presenting in the webinar. The first webinar will be focused on taxes since it will be tax season on Thursday, February the 25th, 2021 at 5.30 at 7 p.m. And lastly, because February is American Heart Association Month, we have partnered with the American Heart Association here in New Orleans to bring awareness to heart disease and obesity. And that event will be Thursday, February the 18th at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we're excited about those webinars and we will continue to update you on our website. So again, I would encourage you to visit our website at www.nrbchamber.org. So as we close, I just wanna remind everyone, after this webinar, you will see a link to the survey. Please take a few minutes to fill out the survey to provide feedback from you because we want to serve you better. And not only that, your feedback and suggestions of webinars that you would like to see in the future. So again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I just want to say a special thank you to our staff, to our Perry, thank you so much for your technical services, as well as to Robert and Dan for that very valuable information. So if there's nothing else, any other questions in regards to membership or our upcoming webinars? If not, good night, and we'll see you at the next webinar in February. Thank you.